Okay, thanks. So, uh, what I want to do in this, uh, I, I will try to be quick, okay, since we are late. Uh, so, what I want to do to show you is uh, some w things that we are missing in uh, standard new physics searches, okay, where I will define standard in a few minutes, and uh, continue the discussion that we had yesterday after Hugh's talk uh, about uh, what uh, can be possible unexplored signatures. Of course, I won't be complete, so I apologize in advance uh, if I miss your favorite strange model signature. But of course, uh, you're very welcome to point it out, and then we can discuss during this week. Uh, so let's start. So let's start from the part uh, standard model, standard new physics. Uh, are we missing something? So what I mean with standard new physics? Well, standard new physics, uh, I mean old models of new physics uh, like laptop quarks, Z prime, and so on and so forth. Uh, which have been searched extensively in the data since LEP and even before, and uh, which can have some signatures that we are actually not, uh, still not looking for. Okay, so let me just show you an example. So, leptoquarks. Leptoquarks are motivated in some beyond standard model process, uh, model, okay. But for example, in this paper here, which has been uh, put on the archive quite recently, they look at what are the possible final states once you produce uh, two-body final states once you produce a leptoquark. So here the process is a phi is a leptoquark, it decays into a lepton and a quark. And what they show is that uh, although we are covering most of the possibilities here, so all these green regions here correspond to some two-body state which is uh, experimentally covered, so, for example, neutrino jets, uh, neutrino bottom, neutrino top, and so on. We still have some possibilities, for example, this blank here, this white here, this white here, and also this uh, yellow here up to, some, uh, up to some point, which have not uh, dedicated searches. Okay. So, just to sake of, compl of completion, it would be nice to cover this, uh, this parameter space, uh, this model parameter space uh, completely. Okay. But we can push the, the exercise further. Okay, so we can try to ask, well, let's uh, have a look at uh, well-motivated possible beyond standard model uh, physics uh, scenarios. So, for example, cases in which we have Z prime, double charge Higgs, uh, R parity violations, some KK modes, for example, KK gluon, uh, some KK neutrino, and so on. Uh, other things that can happen are some uh, leptoquarks, uh, some excited quark, uh, leptoquarks here, some vector-like quark. And let's try to, to make uh, a, a classification of all possible two-body final states, okay? Of course, what, what we mean by two-body, for example, in the case of a production of, of a W, is just, uh, is just a way that we have to make a list, okay? Because here, once uh, you, you consider the decay of the W, this would, with, this would produce a three-body final state. But okay, let's, uh, let's just, uh, not in order not to overcount the possibilities, let's just limit ourselves to this uh, kind of list. Okay, and uh, let's try to assign to each one of these two-body channels uh, possible models that are well justified and that uh, should produce uh, this kind of signals. And now let's ask ourselves, so what are the channels uh, among these channels which are well, motiva well, well, uh, well motivated that have been searched for? Well, and the answer is this one. The exercise was done last year in this paper. So we see that many of these two-body searches uh, have been performed at the LHC. So for example, uh, opposite sign, leptons, the same sign, leptons, and so on. But all these blank things are things that for which we do not really have uh, results, okay? And uh, of course, they, are, they may be difficult uh, depending on the signature. So it's not, uh, it's not something that is, uh, is very easy to search for. But still, once more, it would be nice to be able to cover all this part because it may be that, uh, there as we have seen, there are some well motivated models that hide here. So it may be that uh, they're lurking there inside the data. We are not looking for them, or we are not uh, yet sensitive to look for them. But probably maybe we can be in the future, and maybe we can be if uh, we can propose uh, some new search strategies. And of course, we can push uh, the exercise further and uh, look for other examples. In this case, uh, this table uh, refers to vector-like quarks uh, with standard charge. So we have uh, a capital T, a capital B. So capital T is uh, a heavy vector-like top quark of electric charge two-thirds. Capital B is a heavy vector-like uh, bottom quark 
of uh, char electric charge minus one third. So these uh, typically arise in composite models, but not only. And uh, these are possible uh, final states uh, in which uh, that can be produced uh, in a Hadron Collider. So these, the classification of these letters, the A, B, C, D, refers to this kind of experimental stage. For example, A means that uh, you have uh, more, than, more than two leptons uh, with this kind of, of properties. B, you have one lepton, and so on and so forth. So once more, here you see, once you specify a bit more the kind uh, of object that you want to search for, then uh, it's a bit easier. We, you, can, uh, you can go beyond this uh, two-body final state classification that we had here, in which we try to be a bit more, they try to be a bit more generic. And uh, here you can try to see what are the possibilities uh, and what uh, is missing. Okay, so this is just to show you that uh, despite the huge experimental efforts that we had until now, there are still some spots uh, in the in the landscape of models or in the landscape of decays and signature that uh, we should really explore to be to be sure that uh, our favorite new physics model is not right there where we are not sensitive or we are not looking for. But of course then we can think about stranger things, okay? And stranger things, no, not the show, okay? But uh, stranger things in new physics. And this is what uh, I call this new sta non-standard new physics and non-standard signatures. So at this point, uh, I will uh, represent uh, some of the results by Hug, although not uh, from our paper, more generic. So what do I have uh, in mind? Well, the inspiration that I have in mind for these non-standard new physics are typically hidden values model. Okay? So this plot uh, is very famous. So here on the vertical axis, uh, you can imagine energy. Here on the horizontal axis, uh, you, you can imagine a putative axis of accessibility. Okay? So this uh, plot means that we have uh, two valleys, okay? We live in this valley here, in which there is the standard model. And then there is this peak in energy on top of which typically a mediator lives. And this peak should be crossed by high energy experiments, the LHC. And this crossing, so producing this mediator, should make accessible this valley which is hidden because of this energy separation between the two valleys. So in this sense, in the horizontal axis, we have accessibility because we really need to go up in energy, produce the mediator, and then the mediator will produce uh, these hidden valley states. Okay? And of course, there are cases in which uh, these uh, hidden valley states uh, can decay back to the standard model and produce uh, what uh, I, I am calling non-standard new physics signatures. So let's, uh, let's uh, look at some examples. First of all, inspiration. Well, this... Uh, of course, this kind of, uh, of hidden valley models are not only interested, interesting per se, uh, because they are something quite new, well, quite. It's they are ten years old, more or less. But they they they, uh, they, they were not considered. Uh, they are not uh, older like the other cases that I showed you so far. But uh, more interesting, they can enter, in, for example, in dark matter models. Okay, because this hidden valley part can contain a dark QCD sector, so it can explain, for example, asymmetric dark matter, or uh, in, in a way it can explain freezing dark matter. I'm going to show you this uh, in a couple of slides. But also they appear in models in model with neutral naturalness, so twin X, uh, folded SUSY, relaxion models, which have been proposed in the last couple of years, and so on. Okay, and of course, uh, uh, since we have uh, this hidden sector, I mean, it's hidden, so we have uh, no clue of what's going on here. So the kind uh, and uh, the, the number of signatures that uh, we can expect at the Hadron Collider, strong, we strongly depend on what is going on here, okay? As I'm going to show you in, uh, in, uh, in a couple of slides also. And of course, then we need to talk about mediators. So what are possible mediators? Well, we can have the Z or Z prime. We can have the Higgs, we can have right-handed neutrinos. So these possibilities uh, in the dark matter literature are called the vector, the scalar Higgs, uh, and the neutrino portals, if uh, we have in mind that uh, dar our dark matter lives uh, in, the, in the hidden in the, in the sector. But in supersymmetric model, they, also ca they can also be neutralinos, for example, something that can mediate uh, this, uh, this connection between the SUSY sector, between our sector, the standard model, and the SUSY sector. And of course, here you can have uh, 
have a lot of other possibilities that you can think about. Okay, so this uh, this picture that I'm showing here is uh, is generic on purpose. Uh, it's just to motivate us to think uh, a bit out of the box and see what are typical signatures that are not expected in typical models. Okay, although I, I admit what is typical, what is not typical is uh, is uh, is debatable. Okay, so let me start uh, with. Uh, this uh, dark matter freezing. Okay, so what is the idea? This is not really. This has not really been discussed in the in the context of hidden valley models. Uh, although, to me, it uh, resembles a lot uh, this case. So what to do? What do we have? We have a mediator, a heavy mediator B. Okay, this heavy mediator is what sets uh, through decays the dark matter abundance uh, during the evolution of the universe. So we have the standard model on one side. We have the dark matter on the other side. And uh, there are models uh, in which this heavy mediator couples strongly to the standard model sector. So during the evolution is uh, in thermal contact with the standard model. Okay, so it follows a thermal distribution. And it couples very weakly or feebly with uh, the dark matter. Okay, so it has, uh, it has a very small coupling to the dark matter. So this means that B is not only in thermal equilibrium during the evolution of the universe, but it is also long-lived. So if uh, this is what happened in the, the evolution of the universe. And so it's the decay of this heavy mediator B that is setting the dark matter abundance. Okay, so the here is freezing because there are decays that are setting the, the dark matter abundance. It's not uh, out of equilibrium and freeze out. So at the LHC or in other colliders, this kind of model should show up with some displaced standard model particle vertex. Okay, this has been studied a couple of years ago in this paper by Berkeley people. But this is just a possibility. Ah, sorry, I forgot to mention that this is, since we are asking this to be the dark matter, of course, this part of the decay is not there. Okay. We can also uh, invoke that here in this hidden part, uh, in this hidden valley, we have uh, a dark QCD. Okay, so dark QCD here simply means uh, a strongly interactive group uh, that confines. And this, in here, things really start to be interesting because it, that since this uh, mediator is heavy, is, is heavy, a possible signature is what has been called uh, emerging jets. Okay, so here I put for you uh, the, 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 the original words in which uh, these emerging jets were described from the original paper, so you can read it afterward. But this is the picture of what we expect to emerging jets. So these uh, gray lines, uh, dotted lines, uh, are these uh, dark objects uh, that live in the dark sector. Okay, so here in the vertex we are producing the mediator. The mediator is decaying to dark quarks, so quarks that are charged only under this new confining dark gauge group. Typically, since it is confining, it will form mesons and baryons. Some of them will be stable, some of them will be unstable, and uh, through the mediator, off-shell mediator decays, it will decay back to standard model. But since the mediator is very heavy, because uh, it's living up here, this transition between the hidden valley and the standard model will happen uh, slowly. Okay, so these uh, particles have a certain lifetime, and after that they will decay back uh, to standard model particles. So this means that uh, from far away from the interaction vertex, uh, we, what we have uh, really looks like jets, but then you see that the tip of the cone is missing because in the first part here, we just have dark mesons and dark baryons, which still have to decay. Okay. So since uh, this looks like jet very far away from the interaction point, but uh, it's uh, missing this tip, this is called an emerging jet because it emerges uh, at, uh, at, uh, at, at, at large dis uh, much larger distances than what we would think about a jet. Okay. And this is the first possibility. But we can go on. We can talk about semi-visible jets, as Hugo was presenting yesterday. So the type of setup that we have in mind is always the same. Okay, so we always have the standard model valley, the hidden valley with the dark QCD sector, and an heavy mediator. Just that now, it can be the situation can be the following. So let me just show you this picture. So here we have our interaction points. Here we have these dark hadrons, okay, which can be stable and un or unstable. Let's see that they are, let's take that they are unstable, okay. So they are produced here, they will travel a bit, and then through the heavy mediator they will decay back uh, on the standard model, in some case, okay. In other cases, uh, they are stable and they won't decay back. So what happens is that we have, uh, the according to 
the fraction of uh, uh, dark hadrons which are converted uh, in standard model particles, which is larger here and smaller here, the signature can be normal jets which with a small displacement here, typically small, okay? Or we can have some jets which are collinear with the missing ET in this direction, okay? Of course, uh, the limiting case is when all these baryons, these dark baryons or dark hadrons are stable, they won't collide, stable at least for colliding time, like, uh, time uh, we can colliding distances, and so what we would measure is just uh, uh, missing ET in this case, okay? So, they are called semi-visible jets because there is a jet, but there is also some missing ET which is collinear and is going in the same direction. Okay, and as you showed you yesterday, this typically this can typically arise uh, in these hidden valley models. But we can also think about uh, stranger things. Okay, so up to now I, I talk about uh, the cases in which in the dark sector we have some confinement and the quarks, the dark quarks, have masses which are below the dark confinement scale, okay? Such a way that uh, they can really form baryons and mesons in the usual sense. But we can also have the opposite situation in which uh, we have the mass of the dark core constituents, uh, which is much larger of the dark, uh, uh, the dark QCD scale, okay? So in this case, uh, this what appear at the collider is the so-called quirks, and uh, the situation is, uh, is a bit different because what happens? So we have a strong interacting group, okay? We produce uh, some particles uh, which uh, do not confine, do not form hadrons uh, on the time scale of, of the distances of the, of the collider, but still they feel the strong interaction, right? So what happens is that they are produced, they try to go away one from the other, but then the flux tube uh, gets too strong and so they start to be attracted again right, by this dark group uh, once against each other and they start to do these strange trajectories. For example, you see here the quirks uh, are produced, they start to go away at a certain point, the flux tube, uh, the energy between, uh, uh, between the two states, the two quirks, uh, becomes too strong and they start to come back, okay? And here, according to the, 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 the ratio between uh, the, the, the energy in this flux tube and the energy with, and the mass, uh, basically the mass of these quirks, uh, you can imagine other signatures. For example, here, you can produce some jet in the interaction vertex, two quirks, and then the two quirks start to go away from the other. Then the energy gets too strong and they start to, they are attracted again, and they start to do this kind of uh, helical trajectory. And uh, in the most extreme case, uh, what we would see are things like this. We have a jet and really an helical of, uh, of objects uh, that start to, to go inside the detector, okay? So in this case, the quirks uh, are, uh, are kind of the, of the mediator, okay? They are typically heavier with a TV-ish TV mass. And then we can have this, this case, uh, which uh, in the literature has been called soft bombs. So it's always, this, uh, it's always a hidden scenario, a hidden valley model, just that in this case, this, uh, uh, the, this hidden QCD is almost conformal, okay? Or it's practically conformal, but uh, with a mass gap. So this means, uh, that uh, typically the objects, the, the, the dark quarks will decay promptly, okay? And uh, since the, the decay is mediated by some heavy stuff, uh, they decay with a shape which is almost spherical. So really, in the, in the detector, what would appear is uh, kind of a firework. So you produce, you decay promptly, you start to produce uh, a lot of things uh, with the almost spherical symmetry, and this uh, will, s will be seen in your detector. So the typical signature would be this uh, really messy event, uh, something like this, okay? So, from a practical point of view, how can we try to categorize this, uh, all these uh, cases that I showed you? So together with Andrea, we try to, to make, uh, a, to, to, to really visualize uh, this, what, uh, what is happening. So here, on the horizontal axis, uh, you have the decay length, okay? So you, we go from prompt to displaced vertices, disappearing tracks, uh, up to the stable case. And here, on the vertical axis, we have the multiplicity of the final state, okay? So here we distinguish between the case n equal to and uh, a large multiplicity. So here, when we have prompt decays uh, and uh, a small multiplicity, we have basically the usual cases, okay? So leptoquarks with this kind of decays uh, or vector-like quarks, typically all these things. Then we, can, we go above uh, in the multiplicity, so we go to larger multiplicity, multiplicity, and we start to have semi-visible jets, okay? 
So these jets that are collinear with missing T. And then we go even higher in multiplicity and we have uh, what we call the, these uh, soft bonds or firewalls. Okay. Then we can go to higher decay lengths, uh, to larger decay lengths. And so in this case, uh, we can have uh, here, when the multiplicity is large, these emerging jets that we talk about. But recently, people have started to discuss also about displaced tops, for example. And of course, here we can have all kinds of, uh, of signatures that people have still not uh, think about. Okay, so here I think there is a lot of space to discuss. By the way, it would be really nice to come up with, uh, with a way for the experiments not to miss these uh, emerging jet signatures because uh, it can really be that, uh, that this dark UCD is there, is manifesting itself through these emerging jets, but uh, we, are, we are missing this possibility. Okay, and this is basically what uh, I wanted to say. So, of course, any additions, suggestions, discussion are more than welcome. Thanks a lot.